สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. So I'm standing in the backyard of my parents' home in Bangkok, Thailand. And whenever I make this trip, I'm always looking for new inspirations and ideas to share with you. And today's recipe is just that. I had this dish a couple of weeks ago, and I just fell in love with its simplicity. It's sort of rustic. Quality and really simple, fresh, delicious flavors. I'm making cow cook p l a t o u So cow is rice. k l u k means to sort of toss everything together, and p l a t o u is Thai short mackerel. So. I know that I'm going to be taking this dish back to Canada and make it over and over again because it's really simple and really delicious. So one of the things, though, that I need to get first, one of my ingredients, is green mango. So sour green mango is one of the major component of this dish. If you can't find it, don't worry. I'll talk about how to substitute. But luckily, in my home in Thailand, we've got this massive mango tree, and perfectly, I've got some green mango. Green mango. That is ready to be picked. So in order to pick those, I need this thing here. This is what I call my soy. It's got a basket with a little blade right over here, and that's used to cut the fruit off of the stem. So I'm going to go for that guy right here, which I think is perfect. So you want green mango that is sour. There are green mango that's not sour, and that's not going to work. So let's see if I can do this. Not very good at this, but. Hoop. <laughs> ah! There we go! Ah! Got it! Yay! Perfect. Bug check before I reach for it. No bugs. Yay! Got it! All right. I'll see you in the kitchen. So my version of khao kluk p a t u is basically a simple garlic fried rice that's served with some. Thai short mackerel and some fresh herbs and vegetables around the side, and then when you eat it, you get to do the fun of mixing it up yourself. So it's a very simple dish. Let's talk about our vegetables that go on the side. So I've got here some shallots, thinly sliced shallots. So these are Thai shallots, so they're tiny, and some green onions and cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can skip it. I've got some lime. This is a Thai lime, so it's very small. But other limes will do just fine. The green mango we just got, some chilies chopped up, and I've also got some long beans. And I just want to show you a whole one because in Thailand I find they're longer and also lighter in color. But whatever kinds of long beans you've got will be just fine. I'm just gonna cut these into small, small little pieces so it'll mix well into our rice and give it a little bit of a crunch. So I have to say that this is not exactly the way I had it at the restaurant. Restaurant, but you know, I'm making it better. And now I'm going to deal with my green mango. So I'm going to deal with this exactly the same way I deal with my green papaya in my papaya salad. So I'm going to peel it first, best with a sharp peeler, which this is not. I'm only going to need half because this is very sour. Okay, and then with a sharp knife, which this is also not. <laughs> It's not my kitchen. I have to kind of make do with whatever I have. I'm just gonna make a bunch of decision incisions. Chop, chop, chop. Watch your fingers. It is a little scarier than a papaya because it's so much smaller, right? And then you just slice it. And one of the things that might happen if you don't make a deep enough incisions and then they get kind of stuck together in a big piece like this, no big deal. As long as most of them are shredded up, you'll be fine. You can always go back and you know. Rechop those other ones. I think that's good enough for now. Look how beautiful these shredded pieces are. And if you julienne any other way, it just does not look like this. If you don't have sour green mango, oh, I almost forgot. Um, what you can do is use carrots, shred it like this. I wouldn't use this method with a carrot because it's very skinny. But julienne your carrots and let it soak in some lime juice and allow the acidity of the lime to penetrate the carrots, and you get sort of a similar thing, similar, you know, similar feel, texture, flavor. Okay. So now my vegetables are ready. My mackerel. So this is p l a t o u It's a very sort of homey, rustic fish, widely available, very inexpensive in Thailand. However, if you can't find this, you can use regular mackerel. So when you buy p l a t o u in Thailand, they always come already cooked. 
and already salted. And I believe that's just traditionally how they prevented the fish from going bad too quickly. So when you get it, all you have to do is sear them just to get a nice golden brown color on the skin. I like to put quite a bit of oil so the oil reaches all the you know nooks and crannies of the fish. And if you're using regular macro, you can just get fillets and pan sear that until it's cooked and golden brown. That's all. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is break the flesh apart into smaller pieces and debone it. So this is sort of the hardest part of using plateau is there's a lot of bones. So I like to just take the head off first and then on the back, pull off the fins and you'll get, you'll, you'll feel it. There's bones that run all along the backbone. So you just pull that off. Now I'm gonna remove the belly fins, which also has tiny little bones attached to it. And then I'm just going to split the filet apart. Hey, eggs, there are eggs. No wonder it's so big. And then I pull this off nice and neat. And then the belly also has sort of the rib cage of the fish. So you want to remove these big guys as well. If you like the eggs, you can have the eggs. It's really fatty. I find it a little bitter, so I don't love it. There's also bones that run in the middle of the, the pin bones basically, in the middle of the filet, you wanna get that as well. You can kind of push them out with your fingers. See all this? And it almost looks like there wasn't any, but yes, it is a messy ordeal, but I find this really relaxing, strangely. It's like my yoga. And then once you've got your filets sort of deboned, I'm just gonna pull it apart into little chunks now you might be wondering, if I'm gonna hack the fish up anyway, why don't I just start picking off the meat and you know remove the bones as they show up? Well, like you could, and that's what I used to do, but I find that you miss a lot of bones. By doing it systematically part by part, I make sure I don't leave any bones hidden. So I know the back fins are gone, now the belly is gone, now the middle is gone. Then that's how you avoid having landmines in your fish. And that is it, I'm just gonna do one for now. All we have left to do is make a simple garlic fried rice and assemble. So I've got a wok here, and this is the same wok and oil that I use to fry my mackerel. So that way I get, you know, a little bit of fish flavors in my rice. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with uh, some chopped garlic. I don't actually remember if that restaurant does their rice like this, but this is how I'm gonna do it, because I think it's delicious. And once you notice that the smallest pieces of garlic starts to turn brown, I'm gonna add my rice. So this is just jasmine rice, and you wanna make sure it wasn't cooked with too much water, because that's how you're going to avoid clumpy, mushy fried rice. So when I cook rice for fried rice, it's always one part rice, one part water, at least to start. You can always add water, but you can't take away. I'm gonna go in with some fish sauce, because you can't have enough fish sauce and just a little bit of sugar to balance the saltiness. And that's it. Just gonna keep tossing to distribute all the seasoning. And I mean, seriously, this is such a good base rice. If you wanna start, you know, getting creative with your rice toppings. I mean, fried garlic and fish sauce, really. What could go wrong? Okay, I think that is just about done. All right. Yes, I know the rice doesn't look like anything right now, but just you wait, the magic starts now. Now the fun part. I'm gonna squeeze some lime over this whole thing and toss away. Doesn't this just look so homey looking? I mean, you're not gonna go to any Thai restaurant overseas that's got this on the menu, I can tell you that much. Oh, that smells good. Mm. Wow, really fresh, delicious flavors. The fish is firm, so it's got a bit of a chew to it, and that contrasts really well with the mango, which is tart and crunchy. The shallots add a little pungent, and you know, I look at this, and it just reminds me so much of simple, rustic, 
home cooking. So if you want to know at the very basic level what Thai simple flavors are all about, this is the dish to try. So I hope you give this a try. The recipe, as always, will be on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make it, send me a photo on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to the show, please do so you'll never miss an episode like this. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.